Right everyone, Ref Lecture here. Right, new catalogue nostalgia video. So today's is World Ride Arms Limited from summer 2005. And I've got a few different versions of these World Ride Arms catalogues, so I'm going to do a couple more. Because uh, they used to send out a couple each year, three or four a year, and different designs. So this is the A4 size one. Some of them were smaller, some of them was the staples was in the other way, you know, the fold. So yeah, I'll do a couple more of these at a later date. The Worldwide Arms, if you didn't know, sell mainly deactivated guns, but also antique and collector weapons. So there'll be, as I mentioned, deactivated guns, things like swords, bayonets, lots of war memorabilia, some reproduction, some real. Yeah, good website. I've bought a couple of things from them over the years. Always liked the company. Good to um, buy from. And, uh, yeah, well worth buying from really and they still do sell I don't know if they do the catalogues anymore I know you can buy online from them and I know on their website they do an online version of the catalogue that looks like this I just don't think they do a printed version now as far as I know so if you look at the cover there there's a little bit of a story there about one of the um, lots he'd been trying to get by the looks of it quite an interesting little story if you want to read that uh, yeah, so that's the front page, and then down the bottom is the phone number and the website www.worldwidearms.com. So the other half of that page is page two. So what have we got on there? There's some interesting things on here. I, I, as I've said, they've always done some good things, I think. So you've got some hats there, some old World War Two stuff. Um, some arrowheads there. I got attempted to buy those at one point because I thought they'd be quite a nice thing to own, but never got round to that in the end. Got some antique pistol balls down there. Uh, German World War One pattern stick grenade. Yeah, pretty good stuff. That that's sort of war memorabilia there. Some of that by the looks of it. Right. Turn the page now. On to page three. So, what have we got here? Looks like some submachine guns mainly. So, the ones I was always tempted to buy on here, always wanted a Sten gun. Never got round to it in the end though. But nice cheap prices at 139 pounds with nine pound postage. And I've noticed most prices now for all of these things are a lot more. Some things are double the price now. In 2019. But yeah, I always like the look of the PPSH-41, which is the second one down. The Sten guns, always like the Sten gun. I, I always wanted to get a Sten gun with um, the pistol grip you can get. And then down the bottom there, that is the style of Uzi I did have. I did have a deactivated Uzi. £395. Mine wasn't that price. Mine was something like £150. Because mine was... It didn't have any moving parts, but you could you could pull the trigger and you could um, do the bolt at the top. But that was about it. They didn't do anything. It didn't cock or anything. Mine had the wooden stock like that. But yeah, that's an old spec one, so it means it's got fully moving parts. Yeah, very nice. So now we'll go on to page four. So it looks like you've got some brand gun accessories there and some other... Bren gun case catcher. When I had my Bren gun, I did nearly buy one of those for that. I was going to buy a load of accessories for it, but I had to sell it in the end, sadly. But yeah, I needed the money. So, rare original American 45 50 shot Thompson drum magazine. £295. It's a hell of a lot of money. That was the only thing with the old Tommy guns. Everything about the Tommy guns I always found was expensive if you got deactivated. Got some Sten gun magazines there. A couple of other magazines for different things. So then on the other page, page 5, it's like we've got some rifles and some of the uh, classics down the bottom there. Well, on the whole page, actually, saying that these are all of these would be classics, wouldn't they? So you've got Mosin and the Gant at the top, an Enfield, German Mauser, M1 carbine, folding M1 carbine, 
and then the Chinese .762 model 86S bullpup rifle. Now I've got one of those on my wall, as you all know. Yeah. It was a toss up for me between, when I bought these, it was a toss up between Chinese Model 86S or the one below it, which was the Kalashnikov assault rifle, the Chinese version. Um, so, just because it looked better to me, I thought more unusual, I got the Chinese Model 86S. My one doesn't really have any moving parts, apart from you can um, do the cocking lever and you can. Um, the trigger will move back and forward, but that's about it. The magazine, mine's sort of old spec, still legal to own, you just can't sell them now. Yeah, very good collector piece that is. £195, well that's that's nothing really, I think, for that kind of gun. That, that was the really, with the, the thing with the Tommy guns, they was way too expensive. The AK-47s or the AKMs type ones, they was always really well priced, I thought. Yeah, what's that down the bottom? Anti-aircraft tripod gun. What guns goes on that? MG42, MG53 and MG3. Yeah, go to the next page now. So page 6. Now this is interesting, seeing some of the prices of the bayonets. So, quite a few bayonets there. Mosin the gun. British one there for 55 quid. The modern ones, I've, I've researched some of these prices to see what they're like now. The majority of the old ones now are nearly double the price. All of the modern ones are the same price. Uh, but, you look down the bottom there, B100, the Chinese SKS bayonet for the Type 53 Simonov patterned rifle, £6. That's bloody amazing price for something like that. Um... And I think even double 12 quid, that's still really affordable for something like that. Yeah, not bad prices. Certainly affordable, as they were. As I said, the modern ones, like the British SA-80 rifle band, they're still 25 quid in that. So, not too bad. Now, on to the other page, page 7. Here's some of the interesting, obsolete calibre guns. There's a couple on here. Um, that you could buy... I think they're going to try and change the laws very soon to stop you being able to buy these. But at the time, and possibly still now, you could uh, buy these guns, fully fully working guns basically, without a license. Because um, the ammo for it can't be bought. or well, not easily anyway. Um... Yeah, that's what they rely on, the fact that you can't get these calibers because they're obsolete now. So what's that up the top? Antique 577 Martini Henry. I'll show you the one later that I was going to buy once, but I never got around to it in the end. These must be the ones from the Royal Army of Nepal. Yeah, 650 quid. So pretty expensive, but... Very nice. So let's go on to page eight now. Now this is some of the, I don't know if any of these are real or, no I think if they're copies it says copy. Like the Victoria Cross there is a copy. Um, yeah, nice medals there though. European style circular brass, sundial compass. And then down the bottom there are some police badges for different countries. Quite interesting stuff. And then on page 9 are some swords. If I was going to buy any of those and I had the money, I wouldn't mind that fourth one down. English Infantry Pioneer 1856 Hanger. Looks like it's got a serrated bit on the back. Nice guard on it. Quite short. Yeah, I like the look of that. It's a bit expensive though. But a lot of those swords, very nice. And maybe the second one down, Japanese NCO's Shin Guntu pattern sword. That's a nice looking sword. It's a bit like my one, but mine's a lot more modern traditional handle rather than Japanese sort of style handle. Even though mine is a Japanese sword. Right, page 10. 
looks like inner bullets and grenades and stuff like that and a couple of magazines that one at the top of the right the one they described as big shell a big shell in a 35 mil anti-tank anti-aircraft shell I used to have one of those should still have it somewhere that one down on the bottom left would be good to have we've got something like that here but not with that end on it and it's from World War 2 or possibly World War 1 then on to page 11 some of the old revolvers these are well priced. I always found the Webley revolvers was always well priced. Well worth the kind of money that they go for. Some of them anyway. Like there's just one for nearly 500 quid there. I wouldn't want that one. But um, you look at sort of the third one down. 125 quid. That's a good price I think. I would definitely have had one of those. And then the very first gun. The American Smith & Wesson. 150 quid for that. And it's quite modern looking as well yeah I don't think I've ever as far as I remember ever owned a deactivated pistol now we're going to page 12 more bayonets look up there at the very left hand uh, top British number 4 spike bayonet £3 with £2 postage so £5 for the whole thing yeah that's brilliant a couple of other really cheap ones on there and as I said, some of these old ones have doubled in price, but that would only be a tenner. So. And as I said, the modern ones are still the same price. Don't see the bayonet I've got in here. I've got a AKM bayonet that goes with the Chinese Model 8 success, but um, that cost me 25 quid to get it with that. It didn't come with it, I had to buy it extra. Similar to the one on page 12 at the bottom on the right, but not not exactly like that, but similar. So now on to page 13, which is swords again. Some nice swords on there. If I was going to buy one of those, I'd probably get... You look at the bottom and go up one on the left. The French infantry pattern. Briquette. That looks quite nice. little short sword of the guard. Yeah, very nice. So page 14, some old flintlock pistols by the looks of it, wonder if those would be fully working order, I assume they probably would be, it doesn't say deactivated, so they probably are you know, fully working, a couple of daggers there, nice old cookery, for 36 quid, yeah not bad, and then on page 15, the, that um, antique Swiss model 1889 Schmidt Rubin military rifle, antique obsolete calibre, that was the one I was going to buy once. But I thought, well, have a look at that gun, and I don't know if you all agree with me, but I think for a gun that old, that looks quite modern, doesn't it? You wouldn't think that was that old. If, if someone showed you that, I would, I would think that was... From the 1950s or something. It looks brand new as well when you look at it there. Yeah, that was the one I wanted purely because it looks quite modern. Um, yeah, doesn't look like an doesn't look what you'd think an 1889 gun would look like. Not me personally, anyway. So on that same page is the order form at the bottom there. I am paying by cash, postal order, or check. I just love that. You don't do that much now, I and mean, you can play with you. Pay with your card if you want. I used to quite often pay with a cheque or postal orders. Uh, what else have we got on there? Bit of an arms fair. And then finally, on the very last page, is looks like some Bruman and Mauser type guns. Yeah, Spanish Astra 903. They're yeah, quite nice, but very expensive. There's the Tommy gun there, £795, extremely expensive. I've, I've always thought if I was going to get a Tommy gun it would have to be a replica one, because I, just, I can't afford something like that. 800 quid's a bit too much I think, for something that just sits on your wall. Uh, another Brewman and Mauser Beretta. That's the other thing with the majority of automatic pistols I found was always extremely expensive as well. 
But saying that, down the bottom there, there's probably two that are a bit that are getting on for the more realistic kind of price. So you've got a scarce Chinese PPK for 200 quid about. I think that's not too bad. And then I think I nearly did buy one of those. Down the bottom, Yugoslavian Scorpion Model 84 machine pistol. Pretty sure I nearly did buy one of those ones. 185 quid. That would be a good wall hanger. You know, that would look really good on display. So yeah, that was the Worldwide Arms Limited catalogue from 2005. There will definitely be more of these. Because as I said, they come in different designs. And you would get about four a year. So there's the summer, spring, winter editions. I don't know if there was an autumn one. Uh, so there was at least three a year anyway. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to check out World Wide Arms Limited website. If you're interested in anything, these, any of these things. Because they still sell. And I'll see you in the next video. Alright, see you later. Before you leave, if you ever wanted to support this channel, you can now via Patreon. Or by shopping at Amazon.com and Gearburst. There's more info below if you need that. Remember, if you want to get full notifications for this channel, click the bell. And uh, I'll see you later. Cheers.